communal deadlock in a way to solve it by Baba Sahib Bambir. 4. Necessity of a new approach I shall be asked that if the Constituent Assembly is not the correct approach, what is the alternative? I know I shall be confronted with such a question. But I am confident in my view that if the communal question has become difficult of solution, it is not because it is insoluble, but nor because we have not yet employed the machinery of the Constituent Assembly. It has become insoluble because the approach to it is fundamentally wrong. The defect in the present approach is that it proceeds by methods instead of by principles. The principle is that there is no principle. There is only a series of methods. If one method fails, another is tried. It is this swing from one method to another which has made the communal problem a jigsaw puzzle. There being no principle, there is no guide to tell why a particular method has failed. There being no principle, there is no assurance that the new method will succeed. The attempts at the solution of the communal problem are either in the nature of a coward's plan to cow-toe to the bully or of a bully's plan to dictate to the weak. Whenever a community grows powerful and demands certain political advantages, concessions are made to it to win its goodwill. There is no judicial examination of its claim, no judgment on merits. The result is that there is no limits to demands and there are no limits to concessions. A start is made with a demand for separate electorates for a minority. It is granted. It is followed by a demand for a separate electorate for a community irrespective of the fact whether it is a minority or a majority. This is granted. A demand is made for separate representation on a population's basis. That is conceded. Next, a claim is made for weightage and representation. That is granted. It is followed by a demand for statutory majority over other minorities with the right for the majority to retain separate electorates. This is granted. This is followed by a demand that the majority rule of another community is intolerable and therefore without prejudice to its rights to maintain majority rule over other minorities, the majority of the offending community should be reduced to equality. Nothing can be more absurd than this policy of external appeasement. It is a policy of limitless demand followed by endless appeasement. Frankly, I don't blame the community that indulges in this strategy. It indulges in it because it has found that it pays, it pursues it because there are no principle to fix the limits and it believes that more could be legitimately asked and would be easily given. On the other hand, there is a community economically poor, socially degraded, educationally backward, without remorse, which is exploited, oppressed and tyrannized without shame disowned by society, unowned by government, and which has no security for protection and no guarantee for justice, fair play and equal opportunity. Such a community is told that it can have no safeguards, not because it has no case for safeguards, but only because the bully on whom the Bill of Rights is presented thinks that because the community is nomad, politically organized, or have sanctions behind its demand, he can successfully bluff. All this differential treatment is due to the fact that there are no principles which are accepted as authoritative and binding on those who are parties to the communal question. The absence of principles has another deleterious effect. It is made impossible for public opinion to play its part. The public only knows methods and notes that one method has failed, another is being suggested. It does not know why one method has failed and why another is said to be likely to succeed. The result is that the public, instead of being mobilized to force obstinate and recalcitrant parties to see sense and reason, are only witnessing the discussions of communal questions whenever they take place as mere shows. The approach I am making for the solution of the communal problem is therefore based upon two considerations. 1. That in proceeding to solve the communal problem, it is essential to define the governing principles which should be invoked for determining the final solution and 2. That 
whatever the governing principle, they must be applied to all parties equally without fear or favor. The end.